Hey what's up guys my name is Anand and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about Google Analytics 4 property. What, what is this new version of Google Analytics and what are the benefits and how to implement this new version on your website. So let's get started. Google Analytics 4 property is the new version of Google Analytics that is going to provide smarter insights using machine learning algorithm to identify trends. Um, you can think about this new version as, um, you know, an updated Google Analytics that has more robust and advanced machine learning, you know, modeling and data and algorithm behind it and trying to summarize that huge amount of data that Google Analytics collects and then giving simple and very relevant insights to the end user. So nothing needs to be done from the user side. Everything is taken care by Google Analytics. Secondly, it has deeper integration with Google Ads. Um, many brands obviously will advertise on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Google. Obviously, there is, there is a tight integration between Google Ads and Google Analytics. So with this new version, um, you can get more insights on your return on investment. And I'm gonna cover in, in my next slide on, on some of the advantages. But basically the third key advantage is more customer centric data measurement. Um, so rather than, you know, focusing on overall, you know, analytics of a website, um, Google is now going to give us um, data based on where your customer is in the buyer's journey. So it's going to be more relevant um, in terms of finding, you know, okay, so let's say a customer is in the awareness stage. So what kind of interaction he or she is having next in the consideration stage and next in the decision stage. So depending upon where your customer is, uh, the analytics information will be key uh, to modify your marketing tactic. And finally, uh, the new property will provide more granular data control. So um, just some examples um, that Google gave on how this new property will benefit. Uh, you know, it calculates like churn probability so you can more efficiently invest in retaining customers. Um, so for example, looking at the overall website performance and um, you know, how, how you are acquiring leads and customers, um, Google Analytics can actually predict um, and calculate uh, churn probability based on the engagement that's been happening on the website. Now that's a pretty cool feature. Um, you know, this the, to do this amount of work, you will have to manually export the data in a spreadsheet and then you need to analyze a bunch of data, compare it with historical metrics and then come up with, come up with these metrics, right? But with Google Analytics 4 property, uh, you know, it's going to be much more easier. Um, New productive metrics um, will be added over time. Obviously, they're going to expand this uh, moving forward. Um, there's going to be good integration with Google Ads to provide good uh, return on investment metrics on your campaigns. Um, in the past, Google allowed us to export or you know sync the audience that we get in Google Analytics with Google Ads. So the same thing is going to be possible, but uh, with the new version, it's going to be more relevant and uh, you will be able to uh, do a lot more uh, with Google Ads and Google Analytics integration. Um, the, the new property also allows us to track conversions coming from YouTube video, view, video views. So again, if you have a YouTube channel, um, then this will be super powerful because now you know you can determine conversions coming from YouTube videos, cross network, Google search and display network. Um, and as I said earlier, it's going to provide more customer centric reporting. So you can see like what channels are driving new customers in the user acquisition report. Um, then use the engagement and retention report to understand the actions these customers takes um, and whether they stick around after converting. So as you can see, um, they are now breaking this data based on where your user is in the buyer's journey. And then finally, you get more control over data. Uh, GDPR is a big thing and you need to have control over, um, you know, on the advertising, you need to have control over analytics and how you utilize data. 
So you can choose when you, when to use customer data to optimize ads and when to limit the data to use measurement only. So with that being said, I want to show you very quickly uh, on how to create the new Google Analytics for property and how to implement it using Google Tag Manager. Now um, I'm going to go back into my Google Analytics account um, and just as an FYI, a lot many users might already see um, a button that's called as upgrade to Google Analytics 4. Um, you can you basically have two options. You can either click on upgrade to Google Analytics 4 property. Uh, if you do get that option, you can do that. Um, and then you can create a new GA4 property um, and go that route. Or you can simply create a new property um, alongside your existing universal analytics property. Now, one thing to keep in mind, do not delete your existing universal analytics. I will repeat, do not delete it. The main goal of Google Analytics 4 property is to give you more robust and advanced information. Um, this is not to replace your existing universal analytics. And Google themselves recommend to use this new GA4 property in conjunction with your existing universal analytics property. So um, my simple answer is simply choose create property and then um, go from there. So what Google has done is moving forward anytime when you create a new property, uh, you know, it's gonna default to Google Analytics 4 property, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a property name called as, um, I'm gonna use my website. Com GA4. All right. Um, and then I'm gonna say reporting time zone will be something like this. Currency is USD. Okay. All right, next. So um, I have created a property. Now I'm gonna add business information. I'm gonna say other because mine is a blog. Business size, okay, small. How do you intend to use? You can fill anything over here, um, but basically I'm gonna say measure customer engagement with my website, optimize, optimize for advertising. Okay, um, I don't have an app. All right, hit create. Okay, fantastic. As you can see, you have your new Google Analytics 4 property created. Now it's time to set up data stream. So basically you need um, to install that property so that Google can start collecting data. That's what it is. Now in this case, um, mine is a website. So I'm gonna click on website and click on setup and I'm going to provide the URL of my website stream name. All right. Um, and look at this by default, it's going to enable enhanced manage measurement. Now I, I want to show you like what are the cool things it's going to measure by default. So if you click on this, um, gear, it says it's going to capture page view. Obviously that's boring. Um, we used to get that information, but on top of that, you'll get to know scroll events each time a visitor gets to the bottom of the page. That's cool, right? Outbound clicks, um, each time someone clicks on a link that leads them away from your domain. Site search. Okay, this is important because you want to know what people are exactly searching on your website uh, based on the query parameter. Um, video engagement. If you embed videos, um, then you can capture video plays progress and complete events as visitors view embedded videos on a website. Um, so that's cool. Again, file downloads, capture a file download event each time that is linked uh, to a com document, compress file application, video or audio extension. So these are all you know enabled by default and I recommend keeping them as it is. So hit save and then click on create stream. Awesome. So now you have your web stream details configured. 
Now the final step is to integrate um, the, this measurement ID or uh, using Google Tag Manager. Um, now there is a way to basically integrate it using your uh, global site tag. You know, if you can basically copy and paste this code, um, the one that you see over here, um, on every page of your uh, website, so you can hard code it. Uh, that's fine too. Uh, but what I would say is um, you use Google Tag Manager. So okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on. I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to show you how to go back to your Google Tag Manager and integrate this. So go back to Google Tag Manager. Um, choose your container and then click on new. Okay. Now I'm going to say Google Analytics for, for my website. Okay. Tag configuration. Okay. Look at this. Google is now providing you that option. Google Analytics GA4 configuration. So um, basically you choose this option. All right. And then the measurement ID that I copied from here, you copied this measurement ID and then just simply paste it over here and you can leave the rest of the things as it is under triggering. Just choose all pages. All right. Hit save and then hit pub. Sorry. I should have hit submit, hit submit and then publish the tag. And that's it. So you have your um, GA4 property integrated using Google Tag Manager. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and then I'm going to go to um, real time reporting. And then I'm hoping this will work. I'm going to just visit my website um, to see if um, it's getting fired. So let's give it a shot. Okay, my website is loading. I'm just gonna browse through a couple of pages to make sure you know uh, we, we get the data. All right, there you go. I'm getting my data. As you can see, user engagement, location, um, I got the visit over here. So let me go back actually to real time report um, to my Google Analytics um, GA4 property. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thank you.